Hello there and welcome back to Forza Horizon 4, where we are on to the winter season now of this final playlist. Uh, we've got autumn to 100% in the end, just had the remaining daily challenges left over after our stream last weekend. And now time to get stuck in on this one. Now first thing I see is the Onan Drive, a Land Rover Series 3. I think I might already have lucked across one of those, but it is the reward for one of the season's events. So that's the first thing to jump straight into. Looks like it's also the Forza Edition car. So that should still count <laughs> and might give us some extra bonuses. One way to find out. Okay, and we're in cross-country mode already. <laughs> Thankfully, we have snow tires in an all-wheel drive for the Bronco, which I had to specifically mod for this. Where is that person going? Do they know something I don't? <laughs> is that just an alternative route to this checkpoint? I think it might be. I don't think it's any good, though. Ooh, this thing slides a lot on the road. Not surprising. Uh, it's probably a bit icy and the snow tires are more expecting for off-road surfaces. So it's three laps around Edinburgh, just destroying everything. <laughs> How do they allow this? So there's only a couple of A800 off-road cars natively, but I took this Ford Bronco that I got and gave it like a V10 or something. Oh, we got a daily challenge, nice. <laughs> Gave it a bit new engine and uh, pushed it into the A range. Gave it the works in terms of tuning for gearbox, suspension, all of that. That's often a better option than taking something that's already A class and being very limited in what you can do with it for upgrades. Back through the center of town. I think I went to a McDonald's along here. That tree is in a really annoying spot. Though actually no, the checkpoint is in the annoying spot. I feel there'd be a much nicer corner going to the finish line otherwise. Okay, can we do this corner without crashing this time? Yay, we're learning! <laughs> Brakes are a thing. They're even a thing that we upgraded. That said, it is observable in this game. When you have damage turned off, which I do, <laughs> because I'm not that bothered about this being a simulation game, uh, especially in cross country when you're going all over the show, uh, the tactic of just crashing into a wall <laughs> in order to go around a corner faster is fully legitimate. Sometimes that is just the best way to do things. <laughs> it seems wild and obviously makes no sense if you did have damage enabled. But if you're finding it difficult to maintain speed through a tricky corner and you have damage turned off, just slap into the wall and then trust that you'll accelerate fast. <laughs> if you hit the wall on a bit of an angle, then you'll get a little bit of a rebound going. Or if you just hit into it sideways or something. Anyway, <laughs> race one. Alright, now that we've finished breaking the city, we get to blast through people's lovely farmland and race all the way down to the beach, essentially. And I can't see where I'm going through all of these bushes. <laughs> there is a reason that in cross-country races I will often switch to the outside view, because otherwise it can be very difficult to see where you're going. They just demolished a golf cart. Okay. <laughs> why? Why is a golf cart parked outside in winter anyway? That's that's my question. It's kind of that's on them at that point. I hate when I get stuck behind people. It's, it's allowed this guy to run away with it a little bit. Okay, yeah, we we are going outside because there's too much bouncing in this particular race. I prefer the feel of being inside the cab you get a lot better feedback but when you're bouncing around all over the place it's really hard to see where you're meant to go next Ooh, went wide there 
Yeah, this is not my best track. We're just going to have to hope to catch up to these guys. It's just straight line and getting lucky on some of the jumps. I guess at least we can bust through where they've already been. Oh, we managed to get that one better than they did, apparently. So that's a good start. Hey, the AI is fallible after all. I mean, they're not on unbeatable, so that's a start. It's a reason I didn't have uh, the trial for last week recorded, because that was a doozy. Uh, we had to race a cross-country race in, like, rally monster cars, and they do not handle that very well at all. It was very frustrating. <laughs> After the first few races or attempts, I was generally winning the first race with the with a good car, but everyone else was just coming dead last. And then for the second or third races, all bets were off whether we placed. This, on the other hand, much more straightforward. Right, and now to complete the trifecta of ruining everyone's day. <laughs> Blasting through some farmland and then across some dunes and then through a castle because nothing is sacred. <laughs> Don't worry, we're going to buy that castle soon. Hopefully. Just going to save up a little bit more. I'm trying to go through the holes in the fences and stone walls that they leave so it doesn't slow me down as much. We actually held that through the sand a lot better than I expected. And jumping into the castle walls. You can go high or low here. We're kind of forced to go high because of how we landed off the jump. And I think it tends to work out better anyway. You kind of end up at this point regardless. And then you want to come off that jump and just break pretty hard to get through the next corner. Just ruining some beach wildlife. I'm actually impressed with how well this is going uh, in a cross-country race. This seems to be quite a good combination. I mean, I have spoken before about how the A range is kind of the good zone for cross-country. If we were in S1 cars, this would probably be a nightmare. Uh, we'd manage with our bowler, but it would be chaos. This is slightly more controlled chaos, I feel. <laughs> And tuning up the Bronco from a D, yeah, this was a D-rated car, funnily enough, does just give you a lot more that you can do to it without worrying about hitting that cap and being limited by keeping something in, in A range. Ooh, that's not good though. <laughs> Hit the wall, thankfully. <laughs> we got, the, got through the checkpoint on the rebound. Final lap, we do have one guy who's been hot on our tail for the last little while as we've been a little bit sloppy here and there but we've just got to try and keep it tidy keep it together most importantly make it well through the sand and not crash into anything in the castle I don't even know who that is be interesting to know what car they're in I did see someone else was also in a Bronco so if they're in something similarly tuned then that would explain how they're keeping pace. And then all of the more stock cars are struggling a bit more. Uh, can we go low this time? I want to go low and check this out. Go through here. Uh, I don't think that's better because now we get... Uh, that wasn't too bad. The entrance into that checkpoint didn't feel too good though. It's worked out. I don't think it matters either way. The high road does seem the simplest though. A lot less complicated. So after that championship, we do now have the Land Rover that we need for the weekly challenge, but we've also been revealed the Winter Barn Find, which we should find. As you'd expect, the winter season means that things are frozen over. The reservoir is not, but the lake is, and that unlocks a drag strip and the Barn Find, which I'm going to guess is on this island here, because I don't know where else you'd stick a barn. So we're just going to take our Bronco since it's already tuned up for this sort of thing. And I think this is probably the best launching point here. And as we cross this island, I'm just going to quickly take a screenshot here. <laughs> Let's take a quick picture of our flying Ford. I'm actually going to save that one properly. Because our photo challenge is uh, 
photo taken in Derwent Water in any Ford, and we were in a Ford Bronco, so why not double dip? Crunch. And we can already see the barn. It's even on the low part of the island. It's not even up on the hill. <laughs> Look at that. The roof must have come down in the snow. Good thing it's a Range Rover. These things are invincible. Tell you what, if we get this fixed up before the winter's out, there's a lot of fun to be had. You know what, while we're here, we may as well do the winter-only drag race that happens to be on the frozen lake. I don't know if I'll win, even with how I've tuned it up. I mean, the thing with six wheels has a little bit of an advantage, don't you think? But what I will do is take a little photo looking back at the field, because that'll tick off a bunch more cars. Keep those promotional car photographs coming. Nobody else catches them at extreme high speed quite like you do. There we go. That's a really good way to rack up quite a lot of ticks on your car's photograph collection. Ooh, can we pull ahead? Can we pull ahead? By a nose, maybe? Oh yeah, we've got a little bit more to go. We've got the legs on him. He's run out of gears. Perfect. <laughs> really close race. Now, it's not the Land Rover that we need for the weekly challenge, and nor is it the Range Rover that we just unlocked from the barn find. But our next championship requires daily drivers as a category. I don't even know what that means, but it allows me to use a Range Rover with snow tires, mixing it up amongst hot hatchbacks and uh, what looks to be a Mazda RX-8. <laughs> so, or an MX-5 even. This feels unfair in winter, quite frankly, uh, but I'll take it. <laughs> I mean, I have no doubt that they are going to be much better through the corner sections. But everywhere else, I think we've got a little bit of an advantage when it comes to our grip for acceleration, don't you think? Our biggest opponent at this point is Sunstrike from the uh, sunrise in the distance. Thankfully, we do seemingly have some polarized shades on or something, because it's not affecting us too badly. I do have the windshield reflections turned off, crucially. Which unfortunately is no longer a graphics option in Forza Horizon 5, which is why I have to resort to the bonnet view so much more in that game. Whereas in this, I can still get away with being inside the car a lot more, without being blinded. And another section where I feel we have a bit of an advantage is this is an uphill, <laughs> and uh, yeah, big Range Rover, four-wheel drive, snow tires, uphill is uh, understandably not a problem. Well, as races go, the outcome of that one was fairly predictable. Range Rover beats Roadster most times on the surface. Now, I'm fairly sure that there's a couple of Audis in the field that should do pretty well on these sorts of surfaces as well. But I don't have any, unfortunately, yet. Uh, my only other options were Mercedes rear-wheel drive, which I don't fancy in these conditions. So we'll stick with the Range Rover. And we'll push the MX-5 into a wall. Sorry? <laughs> Not sorry. So we do also have a bit of a Audi versus BMW race going on at the front. We've got a four-wheel drive hatchback versus presumably a four-wheel drive SUV. There's the hatchback gone. <laughs> now just to catch the SUV. He's much better suited to these conditions. More in line with what I am. Whether or not they have snow tires fitted or not is another matter. And whether or not they're tuned the same way. But it's good to have some competition, but we'll see how they go on the uphill section. Well, it seems they won't even make it that far before being overtaken, so we'll see how closely they stick behind me, put it that way. It is nice to have a little bit of more competition in this sort of race, because it does keep me honest. I have to pay a little bit more attention to what I'm doing, and not just blast through all of the corners. Other than my usual motivation of just racing cleanly for the sake of the skill points and therefore the influence and credits that that gives at the end of the race. 
But we are kind of at the point in the game already that influence doesn't matter hugely. We've already unlocked a lot of the late game levels of things just by doing these championships. That's a really good thing about having the playlist system. It is a bit of a shame that they're doing away with the playlists as such, but I understand there's still going to be weekly challenges, hopefully still with these sorts of championships, just to encourage people to do different races. It is a good way to, because otherwise you do feel a little bit bad just going back and re-racing things just for the sake of it, to advance your influence level and stuff, whereas if there's a championship put together that has some special rewards so they won't be new cars anymore the i've run out of the list of those essentially due to the licensing but uh, i believe that you're going to then be able to win the backstage passes to be able to get all of the exclusive cars that have previously been on offer so they'll still be available in the game they're not going to be locked away meanwhile we are back in the city in a different 4x4. <laughs> we were doing a cross-country race to start with. This is technically a road racing series, even though we're using a Range Rover, <laughs> but it's technically a road racing series, which is kind of fun. And there's something nice about just blasting through the streets of Britain, Scotland in this case, in a Range Rover. A little bit of a tight section at the end here where we do have a little bit of body roll to counter as opposed to the Audi that's probably hot on our tails. But we get there in the end anyway. Well now that the road racing is done and while we're in Edinburgh again we do have a PR challenge to do off Arthur's seat. We'll see how well we do in this. I think we're going to at least need the Bowler Wildcat. We might actually need to pull out the Rimac for this one. Yeah, that's not going to be enough. 160. I think we need like 220. Yeah, 60 more, essentially. I think we're going to skip straight to the Rimac. Now, you might be thinking that an electric hypercar is probably not the right choice for an off-road stunt, but we have tuned this one up with rally springs and snow tires. So while it's not perfect, it's pretty fast. Ooh, we got a really bad launch off that, but will we go the distance? Yes, and it counted. There we go. Even with a twist. Just making it artistic. And while we've got the Rimac out, we may as well deal with the other seasonal challenges, such as this speed zone that is up here, that we need an average of... I can't remember what. Lots. But this is where let's just smash into the corner and ride it around is kind of a valid strategy instead of slowing down to go around properly. There we go, new PB and good enough. <laughs> Doing it sloppy just gets it done. <laughs> well, the other PR challenge we're not going to be able to do with our Rimac because it involves the motorway speed trap and a target speed of 434 kilometers an hour which the Rimac can't do it tops out at about 412 partly because we've tuned it for authorities but we do have a Quanigzig Jesco that is tuned up and we're already doing 440 so we just need to hold it together it doesn't have snow tires or anything like that but it does have a ton of grip this corner is the hard one we're going to rewind as much as we need Oh, we're not going to need to rewind. Turns out this car, really nice. That car that we hit, not very nice. Can we still get back up to speed? I think we can. Yep, there we go. Oh, yep, 435, 438. Jolly good. New PB and the seasonal championship requirement. Objective. If you're worried about this particular challenge, the speed trap in general, let alone the seasonal objective, and lack a good car for it. The Jesco is one of those that you do uh, unlock with a backstage pass, I believe. So if you've got any of those knocking around, then that's something to use it on. Or later on, when they do replace the playlist with a system of unlocking more backstage passes, get yourself a Jesco. Very good car. Speaking of playlists, 
and progress we are 50 percent of the way through the winter and we get a citroen ds really nice car but now it's time for the weekly challenge now interesting point the land rover series 3 that we won was a forza edition and it does not count for this you will need an original but i believe that this was a acquisition from a wheel spin or something and i think it's also for sale in the auto show for quite cheap so you shouldn't have a problem it is unfortunately a d100 and our first task with it is to earn 20 wreckage skills which is gonna take a while at stock tuning like we can break things clearly but it takes us a long time to get around so i'm thinking maybe some tuning is in order that said you never know what the next task might be we might have to spend credits on upgrades as a task but you can do kind of half and half like you could do an engine replacement but not bother with like tires and transmission and all that sort of stuff you don't do a full upgrade straight away just in case you want to leave yourself a bit of extra room for spending money on it later we're still getting wreckage skills 20 is a lot though <laughs> that's quite a large target to have to hit can't even get a drift to keep the combo going all the time I'm not going fast enough to be able to drift smash through the billboard and there we go field trip completed right upgrades complete this land rover now has a turbo rally engine in it and better springs now key point i only did all of these upgrades because i didn't want this race to take too long of course if i hadn't spent all that time at home doing the upgrades i'd have been done by now anyway but that's besides the point but it did mean throwing about $84,000 at the car. So if you didn't want to do that, you definitely could just get away with racing this thing as a D-Class still. At minimum, you'd want to give it just snow tires to make it not miserable racing around this track. Did that count? Apparently that counted. Cool, that, that shows you all you need to get inside a checkpoint in order for it to give it to you. Yes, minimum you'd want is snow tires and maybe upgrade the transmission. A lot of the time that's what really holds back old cars. Now I know for a fact that this track ooh, is not one that I particularly like. For various reasons, but mostly the bit right at the end. This bit isn't as bad, but this was the track that was giving me so much trouble in the trial last week. In the rally monster class of car this bit was fine sometimes i was even able to still be leading at this point not often but sometimes but the section up here where we start doing stupid jumps is where it all falls apart especially against the unbeatable ai opponents because they don't really feel the jumps the same as anyone else does this highly skilled difficulty i'm fairly sure should be affected more by physics but it's something to do i think with the unbeatable ai i think getting the benefit of just the best drivers on the track so no matter what class of car they're in they behave as if they're in off-road vehicles but this handled quite nicely trusty companion completed now tough as all boots the lay of the land go for a picnic and drive your series 3 for a total of 15 miles all right so 24 kilometers we just have to drive now well that's a little bit on the boring side for everyone watching at home unfortunately but uh that's fine i guess let's just take it for a spin on the frozen lake shall we actually you know what i just had a little bit of a thought so welcome to the gauntlet this race is about 25 kilometers long which is perfect when we need to drive for 24 of them in the land rover this should count we're still driving it in a race situation i was going to do a separate little series essentially of doing the longest races once i had them all unlocked i still don't have the road race one unlocked i don't think the colossus still need to level up to rank 10 in that which i'm nearly there so that'll be coming up later 
And we might still do that. I think after I finish doing the playlist series, once this month is complete, then I think the following month we'll do a series where each week we'll do a different one of the longest races uh, in a different season. And when we're doing that, the dirt one will probably be done in autumn. So this is a chance to see it in winter. So you're welcome. So we do have an awful lot of time to be able to overtake everyone in this. So we're not too worried about still being a little bit behind at this juncture. We're 10% of the way through. This is a very long race. It will take us a while. I will not be showing all of it. Going through the dirt park here, going through some of the jumps that we've encountered uh, last series. Last season rather, we were jumping our way through the Mud Kickers Park. And now descending into the forests. The snow tires probably a bit overkill for a lot of us, but it definitely would have been handy through the Mud Kickers section back there. There's, there's no way we'd have done that nearly as well without upgraded tyres, especially in an old vehicle like this. First thing to try and do with old vehicles is generally upgrade the tyres. You're just not able to if you want to keep it at a lower rating a lot of the time. Unfortunately we suffer a lot from not having a very good top speed in this vehicle. The turbo rally engine definitely not as good as the V8 that we could have put in it if we wanted to push it to S1. Uh, but that's fine, a lot of this is still pretty twisty, so yeah we get caught up on, on the high speed sections. But we're doing well enough through these corner sections that we're staying ahead. If I was to be doing this with no car restriction, I would have brought my Bronco back out to play instead. I think that would have been a lot more fun. Or be using my Bowler, even though that would be absurd at the S1 rating. But the Bronco that we were using earlier would be... A pretty fun through this. But we need to clock up these Ks in the Land Rover. Honestly it would be easier to drive I suspect if we hadn't done the engine replacement and had just upgraded everything else and it probably would have ended up at like a B rating instead perhaps. I'm glad that there was a side to that bridge otherwise we'd have gone into the river. Uh, but especially in a very long race such as this, having the A rating, having the higher speed, definitely nice to make the race go a little bit faster, otherwise this would probably be, I don't know, well we're halfway through and it's already taken us almost five and a half minutes. So it's going to be about an 11 minute race. If this was still a B class it would probably be closer to 20. Now we're through the twisty forest section and across to the river section. Unfortunately I don't think we get to do the hill climb in this. I think that might only be in the Titan, the cross country one. Maybe not even that. I feel that the dirt race really should have gone up and down over the saddle there. It's back off to the back to our right. Instead we kind of just follow around the bottom of the mountain like this is all just road through here which for the dirt racing series feels a little bit tame not gonna lie we might have to put our own gauntlet together that might be another project to do in future is go into the blueprint editor and uh, make our own gauntlet that covers all of the nice twisty dirt sections that we know and love from playing this game. It'll probably be twice as long, I suspect. But I also think probably twice as fun. I mean, inevitably you're going to have long road sections that just string the dirt bits together. But the fact that this one just completely ignored the mountain, didn't do the uphill, downhill, saddle climb. Because there is the road in behind that you can do as well. Hey, maybe even just a bit of actual off-roading, even though you're in the dirt class. Just no silly jumps. And we're not driving through the gardens to the left, even though there's all those lovely dirt trails through there. 
but uh, we're still on the main road up until this point up here and now we go onto the dirt but this is like the tame dirt part not the interesting dirt part honestly I feel they could have done much better with this Okay, not as hard an impact as I thought. Either way, we are now back onto the dirt stretch. This is a bit that usually follows along the lakeside. Obviously in winter, it's a little bit different. <laughs> Dashing through the snow, you could say. Drifting through the snow, in fact. Snow drifts. There we go. There's a <laughs> there's a title if I ever heard one. Tough as old boots completed. There we go. That is the 24 kilometers that we needed to drive. We're 90% of the way through the race. This worked out pretty well, I think. <laughs> Even if I do say so myself. I guess the other thing we could have done is just drive it setting up our own race, but never mind. We've done a few laps of a different one. But I think this worked out a lot more interestingly, don't you? I have to say, the good thing about racing this is in winter is there's no water traps. <laughs> They're all frozen over. Or snowed over. A good fun. And trading in the Land Rover for a Super Impreza now. Final championship. Another dirt series. Unfortunately, this is not tuned up in any way, I don't think, so we won't have any snow tires. But hopefully we can hold it together. It is at least all-wheel drive, as standard. So it's a good start. And it's a B-rating series, so we're not going too crazy. So we should have plenty of opportunities to just stay in touch, literally, when they push us around. I mean, once again, we have the fact that even the so-called dirt race has a very long road segment at the start anyway. <laughs> so we're not going to be challenged just yet. I suspect once it starts getting rough is actually when we'll start catching up on the others. We can at least cut some corners along the way. I, I remember this track now. We climb up the hill and then we take a turn and then we're on the loose surfaces. Through the snowman. <laughs> Sorry, Frosty. Honestly, this section here is one that I'm glad for a lower rating of car because those jumps back there, you just get launched off at a higher rating, especially like an S1. And then you just go straight into the corner and there's no way to control things. <laughs> you need a break before the jumps, essentially. But the problem is the AI never seems to have that problem, and it just puts you so far behind. And now we're back on the road again. We've had a very small dirt section. For the dirt racing series, you do a very meager amount of off-roading. <laughs> and they got all of these other dirt trails running parallel to this road. Go figure. In fairness, I think it's only the point-to-point -point dirt races that suffer from being far too much on the road. Because this is one of the scramble races and it is small and pretty much exclusively on the dirt. So I think the lap-based races for the dirt series are properly dirt races. But unfortunately, when doing the point-to-point -point races, they don't take the dirt side roads nearly as much as they should and instead you end up with these long tarmac sections in between a small amount of dirt racing. Well this is where I really wish I had proper snow tires because this is properly off-road. There's barely even a track. But I'm fairly sure that my opponents are in the same boat. They're just braking for the corners better than I am. <laughs> I think tires or even just a transmission upgrade I think. We're spending a lot of time in just third gear so even just being able to tune that would be handy. Oh yeah we are slipping a lot through the snow. 
Which is interesting because, I mean, on the surface, huh, I guess that makes sense, but snow is not ice. I feel that in snow you're more likely to just get bogged down. You wouldn't slide across the surface as much because there'd be quite a lot of resistance to doing so. You'd just kind of stop. I don't think it slides quite that much. It's more ice physics being applied instead of just snow physics. I guess it's not hugely deep, but... We're just not really breaking properly, so... Just embrace the slide at this point. <laughs> I might see whether or not it lets me upgrade just the tyres for the next race. Because it'll be up in the gardens and it's probably going to be a similar sort of surface arrangement to this. But I suspect that trying to do anything is going to push it into A class. And this has to remain B. We'll have to see whether or not we've got something in the same category that's actually C class instead. That we would be able to make those upgrades to. And still have it valid for the race. But, I mean, I'm also getting a bit pedantic because ultimately we're well ahead we're holding it together better than what the ai are doing we're winning easily if it ain't broke i should probably not try and fix it well i was right that i couldn't change the tires <laughs> but i have given it a bit of tuning i managed to upgrade the transmission a little bit and gave it a dedicated rear wing for a little bit more grip so hopefully that'll help where the tires can't. Also upgraded the brakes and the springs. So it's pushed it right up to the B700 limit. Unfortunately that means that everyone else has also upgraded their vehicles. So you're always at a bit of a dangerous situation where maybe you don't make the right upgrades and then you end up at a disadvantage where you're trying to make it that you've got an advantage. But if it makes it easier to drive, then that's the key point. If you're struggling, yeah, you might be ahead on stock car, but if you're struggling to actually drive it properly and it's just exhausting, then it's probably on balance better to, yeah, have more competitive opponents, but just a more pleasant racing experience overall. <laughs> That's kind of where we've got to with this, I think. We're still ahead at the end of the first lap, so clearly we're not doing too badly. And it just felt a lot easier. I mean, that braked so quickly there. I over for that corner. Because I expected it to slide more. So even without upgrading the tyres, we couldn't give it snow tyres. The only thing we'd be able to do is sport tyres, and that would have taken up all of my other upgrade overhead. And then being able to make the gear box upgrades, and the uh, driveline and stuff like that, and the springs as well. We're not getting as bogged down in the snow because we've got a higher ride height. And that makes a big difference. Final lap, and sure enough, we didn't need to jam on the brakes nearly as much there, though perhaps we should have because we ran a bit wide on the subsequent one, but overall. And there we have it. Some small upgrades and a commanding lead. And winter is running. Win all season championships in one winter season. There we go. And with that, we've hit the 80% complete of the winter season and we get our final reward. And much like last week, all that remains for us now is the rest of the daily challenges, which all look pretty simple. We've got double dipping on wreckage skills. Unfortunately, we can't do them all at the same time because the top one will expire before we get a chance to do rampage and then we've got the multiplayer ones these will probably take a little while <laughs> i mean in some ways uh doing it in winter is probably a little bit better the worst part is just having to wait for other people to connect but we'll do that on my own time and we'll catch up with progress next week same time same bat channel for spring where we need to own and drive any buggy we have our buggy that we started the cross country series with and if you don't own a buggy, then the season event is to win an Illumicraft 
FE Forza Edition, so the fact that it's a Forza Edition won't count against you like it did for us this time around, it's just any buggy. So you'll be able to start with that event, have a buggy to use, and we've got a showcase remix which is always fun. Looks like we'll be racing a taxi against the Delta Wing airplane? All that and more next week, but for now thank you very much for watching and we'll see you then.